Voilà, nous avons rattrapé un petit peu. So we have caught up. I'm sorry, the speaker's microphone has been turned off. The speaker's microphone has been turned off. Thank you. We'll now move on to the last item on our agenda, which is uh, local and regional democracy in Lithuania. And we will have a look at the report by Mrs. Loisy Du and Mrs. Mosler Turnström. Uh, Lithuania does not have regions in its political or administrative structures for the time being. This report, therefore, is uh, most suited for debate in this chamber. I'm very eager to hear your assessment of the situation in Lithuania with regard to the European Charter of Local Self Government. You have Thank you, Mr. President. Dear, dear colleagues, I'm here to give you information about the monitoring mission we have carried out to assess the situation of local and regional democracy in Lithuania. Our delegation consi consisted of Mr. Gudrun mosler tostrom our Z regional uh, rapporteur, Professor David Morgan as consultant, and myself as local rapporteur. I take this opportunity to thank Mr. Uh, Morgan for his valuable, indeed, assistance. We visited Vilnius, Ignalina and Udina from 6 to 8 June 2011 and met with mayors, city councillors, authorities and central, regional and local level, uh, judges from the Constitutional Court, public servants from the National Audit Office and members of the Association of Local Authorities and experts. There are several good points to be underlined. The right to self-government for local authorities is guaranteed by the Constitution. The principle of subsidiarity is respected. Procedure for consultation are in place. L Lithuania is one of the first countries to sign the additional protocol to the European Charter of Local Self-Government on the uh, right to participate in the affairs of the local authorities in 2009. We found all this very positive. Although in our recommendations, we, we draw the government attention to certain points that could be improved. Municipalities do not have sufficient resources to deliver the services under their responsibilities. Things got worse, not only because of the economic crisis, but also because when municipality tasks increased, at the same time, their borrowing limits when restrictive. The association which represent municipalities is not able to represent them before a court. Vilnius still does not have the special leader status of capital city. Finally, one of our recommendations concerns the situation regarding the regional uh, democracy, but I will leave this issue to be elaborated by my colleague, Mr. Uh, Gudrun. We propose several recommendations in the Lithuanian authorities, some of which are the following. We ask that the government ensure the allocation of sufficient resources to local authorities. We also invite them to relaunch the debate in the parliament to give Vilnius a particular status in the law. We have an amendment to propose to the text which we, ha we have adopted in Stockholm. To ensure that the Association of Local Authorities of Lithuania is given the appropriate standing to represent all municipalities before domestic courts to encourage and develop citizen participation through additional procedures su such as local referendums by strengthening the role of neighbourhoods and also by improving access to the Ombudsman for possible complaints by citizens against municipalities. And finally, we call on the Lithuanian government to ratify the additional protocol to the European Charter of Local Self-Government on the right to participate in the affairs of a local authority in the near future. Dear colleagues, thank you very much for your attention. And now I give the floor to my colleague. Merci. La thank you very much. Our second co-rapporteur, Gudrun. Thank you very Dear much. Colleagues. I would like to complete Mrs. Uh, Loisidou's comments by raising some further points. Essentially on decentralization and citizen participation. Normally, uh, you would expect me to speak about regions given that I'm the regional rapporteur. But Lithuania has no regions. They had a system of counties, uh, counties which could have been considered as a second level of a local government, but following the reform of 2010, all administrative functions have been removed from these counties and 
redistributed to either central or local government. So in 2012, this leaves us with only one tire of local government, uh, the municipalities. This is a move away from rather than towards decentralization. It also goes against what the recommendations in our, uh, what they recommended in our recommendations 87 in 200. At the time we had said, and I quote, Lithuania should move in the direction of creating a system of regional self-government. In fact, the country has moved into the opposite position or direction. At the same time, our impression when we visited the country, uh, country was that the present structure seems to be working. In a county, country like uh, in the size of Lithuania, around three million people, there may not be a need for both regional and local government tires. So perhaps the answer is not in creating regions, but finding solutions in compensate for the loss of a second level of self-government. Possible alternatives could be increasing the number of municipalities or increasing the number of municipal councillors. We made a recommendation to the government in this direction. And at the end of my speech, I propose an amendment to the text which we adopted in Stockholm, explaining and clarifying our proposal. As regards citizens' participation in local government, some improvement seems desirable in diversifying the means of participation, such as allowing local referendums and developing participation at sub-municipal level. We were interested to discover the so-called wards or neighborhoods, which, if they worked well, could become good practice examples for allowing citizens' participations as the lowest possible level. Wards are administrative divisions of municipalities. They carry out minor functions uh, that are important in people's everyday life like cleaning the streets, the maintaining cemeteries, or sweeping the snow. Their members are locally elected, but the head of the ward is appointed. We had recommended the Lithuanian government to strengthen the role of the neighborhoods. Colleagues, the monitoring committee approved uh, the prelim preliminary draft recommendation at its last meeting in Stockholm, and I hope that you will be in position to adopt this draft recommendation as well with the proposal uh, of an amendment that we would like to submit to your vote. This concerns item 6E. It means to, uh, the, the modify recommendation 6E, which says right now, relaunch the debate on CIMAS to give Vilnius a particular status in the law in accordance with the special position as capital city. We propose to add a small but important clarification to ensure that financial resources are not negatively affected. We propose to add the words ensuring that adequate share of taxes are returned to the city budget. Now, uh, at uh, the end, I want to tell you furthermore, we received until yesterday six amendments. We will discuss after Mr. Belikov and Mr. Rupé uh, uh, introduced them. And uh, I really hope, colleagues, that uh, you can, I can invite you to adopt the draft recommendation together with the amendments we propose, and we are for dispose, at your disposal for all questions and for the discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci, madame, les rapporteurs. Thank you very much indeed to the rapporteurs. We've had two people who signed up on the list of speakers, Mr. Sivila Belikov from Russia. You have four minutes, and we, this is the general discussion. After the presentation of amendments, you have the floor again. 
Puis ensuite, nous aurions M. Darius Vrobel. And then Mr. Darius Vrobel has asked for the floor too. Mr. Belikov, please. Thank you, President. We in the Russian Federation are following the situation um, of nat national minorities in former um, members of the Soviet Union. It's clear that we should do these. These are our compatriots. In my speech, I would like to present our position. Now, in the past, in the 1980s, Lithuania adopted a law which provided um, all citizens with the opportunity to, um, to uh, become citizens of Lithuania. So this is not um, an issue for this country. However, 15 to 20 percent of the Lithuanian population um, are um, members of um, national minorities, and the largest groups are Polish and Poles and Russians. Now, since 2010, there has been a law relating to the situation of national minorities, and there's um, a body um, within the Department of National Minorities who is responsible for um, this. I'd like to outline several um, aspects relating to this law. The first is that we note that Lithuan in Lithuania, racism and xenophobia is a problem. It's not just the, my colleagues and myself um, who consider this to be a problem, but um, last year, the European Committee um, for Racism and and, and, and intolerance um, wrote a report on Lithuania when they identified racism and xenophobia as being a problem in this country. As one specific example, um, in February last year, a neo Nazi organization organized a march. They um, shouted um, racist, xenophobic um, slogans. Lithuania for Lithuanians, and so on. Now here we are seeing um, double standards um, at play because um, neo-Nazi demonstrations are being um, allowed by the authorities. This is an alarming situation and we can't look away um, from this when we are talking about local democracy. The second aspect of this issue um, relates um, to the whole of the um, territory of Lithuania. Over the past 20 years, schools teaching in Polish and Russian have been closed. This can only be explained um, using the so-called principle of um, optimization is being um, imposed on schools, and it's difficult to provide te uh, to, to access teaching even in kindergartens in the languages of national minorities. So this is a real um, problem when it comes to higher education. It's possible to get this education in languages other than other than Lithuanian, and we are convinced that a whole series of issues included in the uh, monitoring committee's document which have been presented here today is really a very in-depth report um, a very um, system Systematic approach, but it doesn't reflect these aspects of the situation in Lithuania. And when you're talking about local and regional democracy in a country, you need to talk about the promotion of human rights and the steps which local and regional democracy are taking to um, promote um, the human rights. My time has run out. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Belikov. Now, can I now get the floor to Mr. Darius Wobel? from Poland. Where is he? Dear Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, the report which will be voted shortly was prepared some time ago. 
Today, while proceeding over the document, we gathered a few days after thousands of Lithuanian citizens who represented mainly the Polish minority marched through the streets of Vilnius to protest against violating their rights. The rights which should be visited to national minorities in every country and especially in the country taking care of democratic standards, of the state of law, the country which belongs to the Council of Europe. These rights, which in the opinion of thousands of citizens protesting last Saturday in the streets of Vilnius, are violated by the Republic of Lithuania, refer to significant matters both locally and regionally. This violence referred to the right of free education in mother language, especially on the high school maturity level. They refer also to take lack of the possibility to take by Polish minority high school pupils the maturity exam in their own language with, this, with its their mother language. Another worrying problem is the restitution of land ownership of the Polish living in Lithuania, who are the citizens of Lithuania. It is especially significant in the Vilnius district. A, a worrying practice is the nationalization of the forest land already restored by former owners. More and more such cases are brought before the card of justice of the European Union. A matter particularly is the problem of the spelling of family names. It seems that there is no other more private thing than own name. However, in the light of the present law, Polish citizens in, in Lithuania have no right to use the Polish language to spell their names in accordance with the spelling rules of their mother language. The right and original spelling of their names may only be used as subsidiary in further pages in passports. The Lithuanians themselves are discounted about this law as well, since they have to change their names and make them Lithuanian when they marry a foreigner. There is no room such a, for a such situation in Lithuanian identity cards. Bilingual, bilingual inscriptions of the street names, which are normal in the regions of various ma minorities, are, are illegal in the Lithuania. The Supreme Administrative Court of the Republic of Lithuania in the ruling of the January 2009 asked to remove the bilingual inscriptions of street names in Lithuania and the Polish. In the Vilnius district and in the ruling of the 14th September 2009 in the Salechnikai district. This is against Council of Europe Framework Convention for the Protection of Minority Rights and the Lithuania Act Law on National Minorities. Lithuania does not abide to pro provisions of the Polish-Lithuanian Treaty of 1994 in this respect. Local self-government, uh, just one minute. Local self-government authorities are punished for not removing the previous inscription which used the Polish language alongside with Lithuanian. The Polish delegation on behalf of which have the uh, honor to speak is impressed. I'm, I'm finished, I'm finished. We cannot expect the conclusion regarding the respect of minority rights and especially the right to the free education in the mother language, the correct spelling of names, and bilingual topographic, topographic subscriptions. That is why the members of the Polish delegation will 
vote against accepting the report in the protest form. Thank you for your attention. Merci, monsieur. Essayons chacun de garder son temps. Thank you. I think it's um, incumbent on us all to stick to our speaking time, a question of respect for the next speaker. So that brings us to the end of the list of speakers. I'd like to ask our two rapporteurs their opinion. You have a maximum of three minutes each. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. You all raised very important and serious issues, uh, but nevertheless, I will, would like to reject these amendments tabled by Mr. Belikov, and I will explain why, and I will make a counter-proposal. No, no microphone on for the speaker. No microphone for the speaker. Voilà, merci. Ça y est. Uh, so I, I was just saying to the rapporteur that we'll come on to the amendments now. So please, if you could not speak to the amendments, we're still discussing the general debate. But then I want to uh, uh, explain uh, uh, why I think it's very important and a serious issue. But let me tell you, we uh, monitor the Charter and uh, not the Human Rights Charter. But this is nevertheless a very, very important question uh, to us. And I will explain later how we could, I will propose how we could deal with it uh, in a very good and uh, serious way. Thank you, Mrs. Loisidou. Okay. Um, I want to say that we had in mind, of course, these all political issues mentioned uh, from our colleagues, but uh, uh, we needed to be uh, focused on our mandate. Uh, these political issues and all the issues regarding the human rights are beyond our mandate and our jurisdiction. So we had to be in our restrictive limits. And I, I, I'm saying again, we had them all in our minds. Yeah. Monsieur le Président de la Commission, notre ami Lars The Chair Molin, of the Monitoring Committee, Mr. Lars Molin, would you like to take the floor? Vous l'avez. Yes. Thank you, President. Uh, let me first say that I agree uh, that the issue concerning the rights of national minorities and the use of their language is a very important one. However, the Congress is monitoring just the European Charter of Local Self-Government, not human rights. In my discussions with the Committee of Ministers, they have been very clear on that that we are not monitoring human rights. However, human rights is one of the priorities of the Congress. We can make the local and regional authorities aware of their responsibilities concerning human rights. Uh, we can also collect data that we are monitoring. But now to, to summarize this, because this is such an important issue about national minorities and the use of minority languages, I would like to propose, and I'm willing to put on the agenda of a monitoring committee this issue concerning the rights of national minorities. And I think we should devote time in our com committee to discuss, discuss this very important issue and I think the best opportunity for that will be at our meeting in October. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président de la Commission. Thank you to the Chair of the Monitoring Committee for having made that point. I was going to make the same point, but I think it's most appropriate that you have done so. 
In terms of monitoring missions that we carry out on behalf of the Congress, we are monitoring of course the implementation of the Charter of Local Self-Government. We require a special brief or mandate where we to be monitoring anything other than the Charter. And there, of course, the Committee of Ministers would uh, uh, come down on us like a ton of bricks and say, well, this isn't really within our remit, which is why our rapporteurs uh, haven't, in fact, dealt on this issue at any length. So that's how the land lies for the time being. But I take note of your excellent proposal, Chair of the Monitoring Committee, that you will be looking into this issue within a given time period. I will give you the floor uh, subsequently, but not now. The Monitoring Committee has presented a draft recommendation to which six amendments have been tabled. I call on Mr. Belikov to support amendment number one. You have one minute. So, because we're um, short of time, I'll uh, present um, the, 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 the amendments and then we'll try and work quickly. Amendment 1, Mr. Belikov. Okay. Okay, well, amendment number one. So add to paragraph eight a new subparagraph G as follows, regardless of existing concern with the situation around national minorities' rights, including those laid out in reports of the UN Council on Human Rights Working Group and the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance made in Lithuania in 2011, the cases of racism and xenophobia still take place. President. I would like to go through all the amendments. I think it will just really facilitate our work if I can present them all. And then then um, we can hear a common position of the rapporteur to all the amendments. Mr. Velikov, according to the information made available to the chair, you've tabled five amendments. Now, there was a discussion just prior to the sitting with the rapporteur, and I have not been informed of the results of the negotiations with the rapporteurs, which is why I have called Amendment 1. Now, unless, of course, the rapporteurs and the chair of the committee tell me to act in any other way. Alors, qu'avez-vous... Dans les conclusions de la discussion de ce matin. So what was the upshot then of the yeah, discussion that took place this morning? I think it's the best if we uh, just work with all the five amendments, uh, all concerning human rights and uh, the answers we give and uh, the, the way uh, uh, the proposal we made, we can do at once. So it's the best way and it's kind of uh, saving time. Well, if that is the request of the uh, committee, together with those who table the amendment, I will now ask Mr. Velikov to present amendments 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Thank you. Then moving on, amendment number two, add to paragraph five, a new subparagraph H as follows. Lithuania may find itself in a, in a legal vacuum in the sphere of national minorities' rights regulations due to the absence of a single state authority which would deal with this problem. Amendment three, add also to paragraph five, a new subparagraph I as follows. Due to a number of amendments throughout the year 2011 to the national education legislation, the national minorities' right to get education did in a natural language has been infringed in Lithuania. In the next one, paragraph uh, five, um, a new subparagraph J, national minorities in Lithuania are deprived of the possibility to use their national language in topographical names in places of their small scale settlement. Next one, a new subparagraph J to paragraph 6 as follows, to ensure at legislative level as well as in legal practices the implementation of recommendations in the sphere of human rights made by the UN Council of Europe and the OSCE. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur Belikov, for Thank you, Mr. Belikov, for presenting the amendments, the opinion of the committee, the rapporteurs on these amendments. 
thank you very much. Uh, so I will uh, uh, remark on those amendments and uh, and uh, I will also give some solutions once more. Uh, I want to underline this matter that we didn't uh, didn't uh, uh, monitor human rights. And uh, before I came directly and said we, I, why I would reject uh, those five amendments, because I wanted to save some time, so it was a little too fast. Uh, but I will explain uh, why, and uh, I give my reasons and a formal and an objective. I agree as I said, with the spirit of these comments. However, I would like to recall that uh, the Committee of Ministers, as Mr. Lars Moulin said, made it clear what we have to do. And these amendments deal clearly with human rights, and we cannot recommend anything on these issues. As underlined in, uh, in one of the amendments, the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance, ECRI, which is a Council of Europe body, deals effectively with these issues and makes recommendation and we should leave it to the competent bodies on uh, human rights of the Council of Europe. These are my, is my and our justification to the rejection. That doesn't mean we don't take it serious, but we have to keep in line with the rules we have. However, let me make, let me make a proposal we talked about this morning and uh, a counter amendment. And once more, I underline the proposal of Mr. Lars Moulin that we will deal with this issue in another monitoring committee meeting where we have time to prepare this really important theme. Uh, my proposal first. I think uh, this is a crucial issue and I raised it in this amendment, I, I raised uh, in this amendment by Mr. Belly Koff and uh, the, national part, the participation of national minorities in local public life. And I suggest to add your comments in the appendix of the report you have in front of you, which is dedicated to human rights. This is the first suggestion. The other, Mr. Moulin gave, that we deal with it in a committee meeting. And, uh, at, le and at last, uh, I want to leave in my counter amendments. Uh, and we suggest two Amend, uh, two counter amendments following uh, 4E. 4E would be uh, a new paragraph in recommendation. It reads as uh, follows. The good participation in practice of national minorities in parliament and local councils. And the next uh, proposal would be a new one. In, it would be 6E, and the actual 6E would get a new G. The 6E would, uh, 6I, I'm, I'm sorry, the 6I would uh, uh, read as follow. We revise the legislation to ensure the participation of national minorities at local level in light of Venice Commission Opinion 2003 on the draft law on amendments to the law on national minorities in Lithuania. Those two uh, recommendations we give as rapporteurs and uh, we ask you to vote for them. Alors, mes chers collègues, et c'est très compliqué parce que colleagues, vous n'avez pas de texte. It's getting a bit complicated because you don't have a text, I don't have a text, so it's all a little bit difficult. If I can just sum up the position of the committee as you've understood. Has the text been distributed? Vous les avez les textes? Ah ben pardon, alors nous on les a pas eu. I'm sorry, but we don't have the text. Donc Si on vous, on comprend bien, la position de la commission, if I've correctly understood, the committee's position is to recall a decision taken by the Committee of Ministers. We can't, in fact, uh, vote on something which would run counter to a decision taken by the Committee of Ministers. So rather than having an annex 
uh, appended to the report, two amendments would be changed with a new paragraph. And apparently these texts have been distributed. Who has the texts? Mr. Uh, President, we would like we, we would like to insert in the in the recommend, draft recommendations uh, number four E. A new four uh, E uh, is a new one. It reads, yeah. 4E would be a new one. It's the last vous, vous one of point four. moi je demande à l'auteur des amendements. Well, I'd like to ask the table of the amendment, because that's the procedure we have to abide by. I'd like to ask those tabling the amendment whether they agree with the uh, suggested amendment to four one six. I, I will give you the floor. I will give you the floor when I finish. So, a, a counter amendments have been put forward. So, the four I, you may well have had an opportunity of looking at the suggested wording. Also, six I, and then following that, it's been suggested that an annex be added to the report, making clear the position of the Committee of Ministers. Have I summed up now the position? Thank you. So, rapport. The tabling of the amendment, do you agree? Thank you. Taking into account um, what Lars Mollin has just been said about the future session and um, the proposal which has been made by the rapporteurs, I am prepared to put this proposal um, to the vote. Um, I think we should have a vote on the amendments from the rapporteur. Well, the author of the amendment is just in compromise. What do the rapporteurs and the chair of the committee think? The rapporteurs first. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, this good solution. And I want, want to stress once more that we, uh, uh, that we um, extend the appendix uh, with, uh, with the meanings of the recommendations and that we will deal with it in a, uh, in a monitoring committee and that we uh, put in two new paragraphs just to concre concretize uh, uh, the meaning of how, what we can deal with in human rights questions. Alors. Si je vous ai bien compris, if I've uh, correctly understood you, Mr. Belikov, the annex uh, to the report you feel is a good solution and it will be then re-examined in committee. So uh, can we then get the views of the room? Are you in agreement with the proposal? No objections? So we have then approved the idea of an annex being added to the report, and that will be discussed in committee. Now, when it comes to the two counter-amendments or counter-proposals, the draftsman, Mr. Belikov, hasn't given us yet a very clear position, uh, suggesting that he hasn't quite understood. So, Mr. Belikov, is there anything else you'd like to add? No. These amendments don't relate to my amendments. They just clarify the position of the rapporteur. It's okay. In that case, the two counter amendments or counter proposals will have to be put to the vote. One by one or both together? I suggest we take both those amendments together. If there's no objection. We will use the electronic voting system. I think the counter proposals or the counter amendments put forward by the rapporteurs, we heard about them earlier. So if you're in favor, you will 
press button one. If you're against, then press button two. Don't start yet, though. And if you wish to abstain, then you'll press button three. The vote is open. J'attends les 15 secondes réglementaires. Just waiting for the 15 minutes, uh, the statute of 15 minutes to lapse. The vote is closed. I'd like the result to be displayed. Oui. Pour 50. 50 in favor. Contre against 17. 17. Et abstentions. 23. 23. So the two counter-proposals or counter-amendments put forward by the rapporteurs are therefore adopted. And in the subsequent discussion, of course, they will be re-examined. So thank you very much indeed. The chairman has asked for the floor. No. Now we have another amendment, not from Mr. Belikov, but Mr. Bronis Ropa. Would you be good enough, please, to move your amendment? President, ladies and gentlemen, in 2010, uh, an administrative apparatus was um, introduced as an executive um, body in this sphere. There's a need to um, strengthen not the local um, institutions, but the regional institutions. Therefore, I have a proposal in paragraph 6 to change the entire subparagraph G to um, make it possible for regional development councils to act as forum to discuss um, regional budgets and also to strengthen um, the administrative apparatus. So that's the sense of my amendment. So we've just heard Mr. Ropa's amendment. Does anybody want to speak against the amendment? Madame le rapporteur. Rapporteur, you have the floor. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, we understand this amendment, but uh, even in this uh, text, uh, there there are uh, there are includes uh, financial measures. Uh, we don't uh, have on our mandate to discuss it, and so we make a counter proposal that uh, reads as: take measures to develop stronger regional tire by increasing the number of competencies of the regional development councils, strengthening their administrative apparatus and looking forward for the establishment of regional budgets. This would be the counter proposal in paragraph 6G. Now, Mr. Ropo's amendment involves adding a second part to subparagraph 6G, and our rapporteur is against. What is the opinion of the chair of the committee on that amendment? Well, okay. I am uh, agree with the rapporteur on the counter-proposed uh, uh, counter-proposal. D'accord. Alors, nous allons donc, je, je me retourne vers l'auteur de l'amendement. So I turn to the author of the amendment. Do you wish to maintain your amendment? President, I understand the amendment tabled by the rapporteur and I agree with it, so I withdraw my own amendment. Thank you. The amendment is therefore withdrawn, so it will not be put to the vote. 
the oral amendment, however, that we've just heard from our rapporteur. It now is put to the vote. We will vote electronically on the oral amendment we just heard from the rapporteur. So if you agree with that counter-proposal that we've heard from the rapporteur, vote in favor. One, two, or three on your voting handsets. The vote is open. Le scrutin est clos. Je the vote is closed. I call for the result to be displayed. 60 in favor, 8 against, and 18 abstentions. So the counter amendment, the counter proposal as reworded by the rapporteur has been adopted. That brings us to the end of our examination of the amendments. We will now put to the vote the draft recommendation as a whole. May I remind you that in order to adopt a draft recommendation, we require two-thirds majority of the votes cast. So please use your keypads, your voting keypads. So once again, yes, no abstention, one, two, and three. On the draft recommendation as a whole, the vote is open. Le scrutin est clos. Je the vote is closed. Affichage. I ask for the result, result to be displayed. Ah, il n'y a pas d'affichage. Il y a des zéros partout. No display. No, no result. S'il vous plaît. Ça n'a pas enregistré. Il y a eu un problème. There seems to have been a problem there somewhere. Est-ce que le vote peut encore ressortir ou pas Il faut le refaire. We will have to proceed to vote once again. Yes, are you ready? No, not yet. C'est bien électronique, mais ça a ses règles. Technology is all well and good. Can we see the result now or not? Alors on va le faire. Ah bah on va le faire à mal mais. Ah deux secondes encore. Bon. So we will take that vote again. We are voting on the whole of the draft recommendation and we require a two-thirds majority in order to adopt it. Two-thirds of the vote cast, that is. So one is yes, two no, three abstention. The vote is open. Le scrutin est clos. The vote is closed. Je demande l'affichage. I call for the result to be displayed. Oui, 63. 63 in favor. Non, 12. 12 against. Abstention 16. 16 abstentions. We therefore have a two-thirds majority in terms of the votes cast. The draft recommendation as amended is therefore adopted. Which brings us to the end of that item. I'd like to thank our rapporteurs and the Secretariat. I've got three final points to make. First of all, I had to uh, stop for people from taking the floor because we're at the very end. I'm going to give the floor to them very quickly indeed. 
Jean-Louis, with regard to intercultural towns, you have one minute. Yes, Chairman. I just wanted to take the floor during the debate uh, dealing with uh, intercultural towns and cities and minorities and communities. I wanted to point out that Congress, dear colleagues, uh, received a letter from Leila Guven, our colleague, who, as I'm sure you know, has been held in prison for the last three years in Turkey. And this letter stated that her trial will be taking place on the 9th of April. And what she would like, President, is for a delegation from the Congress to attend her trial. And quite clearly, I would uh, call on all colleagues that are interested in this and would like to express and show their support to her to contact uh, Leila Guven through the national delegations, expressing their support, and for us also to write to Turkish authorities to ensure that the trial is uh, held in a uh, fair and uh, fair way, full compliance with human rights. And I would also like to point out that for those of you that are interested, at quarter past one, we're going to be meeting the hunger strikers in the town of Saint Maurice, and these hunger strikers are defending the rights of all political prisoners in Turkey. There are 38 uh, mayors, uh, 44 journalists, uh, 74 lawyers, uh, and 2,500 children. But a few are in uh, prison at the moment without any charges having been brought. And uh, I just wanted to point this out. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I just wanted to point out that we haven't yet officially received the text of Lila Guven's letter, but quite clearly what's just been said will, of course, be uh, recorded. This is the only in information I, we can give you at the moment. The second speaker is our colleague, Mr. Perret, but he's now said that he doesn't need to take the floor anymore. It's difficult to take the floor now. Well, one minute, maximum, please. Uh, on behalf of the Lithuanian delegation, I would like to say thank very much for Irene Lizidou and Gudrun Mesra Tonstrom for this question about local regional democracy in Lithuania. Thank you very much for everything what you did for Lithuania. Thanks. Merci. Thank you very much uh, for pointing this out. 